Hi, my name is Insu, creator at InView. In this tutorial, you're going to learn about scalars. By the end of this video, you'll know what scalars are, how they work, how to add a scalar to a mesh product or make a scalar-only product, and a couple of principles you need to keep in mind during this process. I assume that you have watched the tutorial about skeleton first, and if you haven't, I recommend you to watch it first before this video for easier understanding. Without further ado, let's get started. First, what is a scalar? Scalars allow you to resize and manipulate the width, length, and height of a mesh. Scalars can only be applied to avatars and avatar clothing products, meaning they cannot be used for furniture. So, how do scalars work? Let's say we want to apply scalars to an avatar. An avatar consists of bones, which affect the mesh that cover them. Scalars can be applied to one or more bones and scale the vertices weighted to them and change the shape of the mesh. This means you can make every body part bigger or smaller, longer or shorter, thicker or slimmer. You can also make the scalars apply to accessories whose skeletons happen to be attached to the bone. And this means that you can scale your mesh without worrying about whether accessories and hair products will be broken. It all just works. Then how do you add a scalar to a mesh product? Let's try scaling a head. First, open InView Studio, search for the head you want to scale, then click Derive. Once the item loads, go to the categories on the left and you'll see the scale section. Click on it and you'll see the text fields in which you can type in different numbers and adjust the scale value. In the three dimensions, there are x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. On InView Studio, the x, y, and z are relative to the bone, not world space. In other words, how the x and y axes are oriented, if they move left to right or front to back, varies depending on the bone. The z axis, though, is always along the length of the bone. The scale value is a multiplier, so a scale of 2 to 2 scales the size of the mesh by twice in the XYZ. Likewise, a scale of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 scales the size of the mesh by half the original size. These three numbers don't have to be the same and you can always be creative with them. As mentioned earlier, you can adjust body parts and clothing meshes. But how do you make a scalar-only product? Scalar-only products, or scalars, are a pure form of scalar you can layer on your avatar and alter specific body parts so the proportion and overall shape of the body fit your aesthetic. Let's try making one. You can make a scalar by deriving from empty female clothing. If you want a scalar for your male avatar, you should derive from empty male clothing. But since I'm making one for my female avatar, I'm gonna derive from empty female clothing. Click Create on the top right and you'll find Empty Female Top. Click and you'll see Empty Female Clothing as its parent item. Click on it and click Derive. Once the item loads, go to the Scalar section right here, click on the plus sign, and now you have the text fields again. Now there are two more things you need to know in order to proceed from here. First, Bone Names, and second, Skeletal Hierarchy. Each and every body part of an InView avatar has a specific bone name. You have to use this exact name when scaling so that Studio can identify that particular body part you want and scale it properly. Now, Skeletal Hierarchy is basically an organized map of these body parts that show their hierarchy. The ones on top parent the ones below them. For example, the left hip is the parent bone of the left thigh. So, the left thigh is the child bone, and it's also the parent bone of the left calf. It's important to keep this hierarchy in mind, because when you add a scalar to a bone with child bones, those child bones also get scaled. I'll attach this hierarchy map in the written article of this video so you can refer to it when you make a scalar on your own. Let's come back to the studio and try making a lag scalar. The node is where you can input the bone name by either selecting from the drop-down list or just typing in it directly. When you're typing directly though, note that it is capital sensitive. I selected the left hip and scaled it as 1.3 for X and Y. I'm gonna leave the Z axis as it is because it's gonna lengthen the leg and make it skinnier, offsetting the thickness we put in for the X and Y axis. 
hit preview and you have a thicker left leg. Notice how even though we chose the left hip, it doesn't only thicken the hip part, but also its entire child bones, including the left thigh, calf, and even the foot and toes. You can add the same scaler for the right leg. If you want only the thighs to be thicker but not the hips, you can select LF thigh and RT thigh as nodes instead. But what if you don't want the child bones to be affected? You can add a scalar to the child bone and apply a value that is half the value of the parent scalar. So you basically scale them twice. Let's say you don't want the feet to be thicker. You can add a bone scalar for LF foot and a bone scale for RT foot and input half the value you put in for the thighs. Since we put 1.3 earlier, we're going to put 0.65. Hit preview and you'll see the result. Notice that since the scale values are different, the shape of the mesh gets a little jagged. But no worries, you can always play with the numbers to make the shape more natural. Now that you're all set, you can have fun with the scalars.